First question is from Kirsten Watson. Go ahead. Hey, Dave. Um, you've mentioned that a few guys have just been working with the hitting coaches, and some of the players have also shared with us whether they've just been working on dialing in or a few adjustments, slowing down, et cetera, seeing the ball better. Typically, how long does it take for those things that you're working on to kind of be seen in a game? You know, it's uh, it's interesting. I think sometimes with some players, it could be uh, a pitch. You know, you see a pitch out of the hand. It kind of syncs up your timing. It could be a swing you take. It could be an at-bat. It could be a collection of at-bats throughout a game. Um, so that's kind of player to player. Um, I, I think as an offensive team, um, I've seen it happen pretty quickly. It could be one game. Uh, there's a big hit and guys exhale. Um, the thing for me is I just know that guys are preparing and grinding and mining the little things and valuing the strike zone, uh, trying to pass the baton, get on base, uh, and, and not be the one person that has to carry the load. I think that's where offenses, individual players get into problems at times. So I don't see that right now. So I'm encouraged that, uh, you know, we got a tough uh, customer in Woodruff tonight. But, uh, you know, for me, I just want us to go out there and take competitive bats and, uh, you know, do whatever it takes to win. And last night you mentioned just considering the first month of the season that the win-loss, that all was you were fine with, but you weren't too happy with how the team got there. As we now look ahead, a new month, obviously I don't want you to look too far ahead, but what do you want to see from this team that just kind of gets them to the next level? Yeah, uh, I think that it's just continue to play clean baseball. Uh, we're, we're pitching well enough to win a lot of baseball games, just catch it, um, be fundamentally sound, uh, take good at bats, take walks when they're given, run the bases the way that uh, we've been known to run the bases and prepare to win each day. So uh, with the talent that we have, it's an easy bet that things will turn. Um, but yeah, when you're mired in not playing good baseball or winning baseball, it is frustrating for everyone. Thanks, Dave. Yep. Next question from Dave Vasse. Go ahead, Dave. Dave, what did you see from Alex Vesey in spring training and how much uh, can you use him in leverage situations? Um, it, it, it's a fastball change mix. Uh, there's a there's a breaking ball in there. Um, it's 90, 92, good command. And so I think for Alex, you know, we'll see the game situation, how we're going to use them. Uh, I think our pen is in good shape going into tonight. Um, but I do see him as a guy that gets left and right out. I, I, I know we got spoiled the last two games where Bauer went the full distance and then your bullpen game worked out pretty well for you. Uh, with the injuries to Gratterall, Knable, Price, where can you turn to as far as, you know, leverage outs that are not Trinan and Jansen? Um, I, I think Victor's a guy um who, who's obviously i think he's proven that uh in his short time uh, with us i, I think uh, scotty alexander is throwing the, the baseball as well as i've seen him in, in quite some time um so I, I do think that we have guys to go along with uh blake and and uh, kenley thanks dave yep next question is from Jorge castillo go ahead hey dave uh, just with blake um you know he's striking out more guys Hitters aren't scoring off the ball against him. I think it's one barrel ball all season, but he still has given up a hit in every outing. I'm just wondering, what are you seeing in his outings? It's strictly, I guess, bad luck. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's you know, I, I'm not always about the uh, luck or unlucky kind of thing, um, but he's been very unlucky. I think if you look at quality of contact and how he's given up base runners, it's a lot of soft contact. So um, I do think that there's more punch in there. Um, so we just got to kind of find a way to get that first hitter out. So I think that's kind of the crux is if you look at the first hitter that he's faced, uh, I want to say it's an 80% clip that these guys are reaching base. And it's not a walk, it's strike throwing, but it's soft contact. So uh, I, I guess my challenge is to just continue to go out there, attack the strike zone and, and expect the ball to be hit at somebody going forward. Um, anything new with uh, Bruce Dar? No, uh, he's still kind of in treatment mode, and he's here with us, not playing catch, getting his uh, cardio in and, and working out, but um, not picking up baseball. How about Cody or, or uh, Tony Gonsolin, Joe Kelly? Yeah, those guys? Tony uh, threw a pen yesterday. I think in a couple of days uh, he'll get back on the mound, probably either tomorrow or Monday, and it should be more extended. So 
uh, hopefully, uh, you know, the progression continues to build and where that takes us in a week, uh, we'll know more. Uh, with Cody, I talked to him last night. He's in a good place, um, getting antsy, but um, he, he's still a little bit of ways too, though, because he, he's not running at full speed, full body weight, or uh, facing live pitching. So once he gets there, it'll be a different conversation. And uh, with Gavin Lux, uh, you know, he looked really good in spring. What does he need to do to get back to that, that form? Um, I, I think right now with Gavin, um, he's like a lot of our guys, they're grinding. But I think for me is just the encouragement to just keep it simple. Um, try to take good at bats. I thought he had a couple good at bats, took a lot of good swings. And it's just like a lot of our guys, where hey, when you get the ball in the strike zone and get a good pitch to hit, you got to finish it bad. So I think if you do look back at the last, you know, since he came back from the IL, there are some pitches in zone that uh, he he's missed. And, and so if he can get better at that, there'll be some good things coming. Thank you, Dave. Yep. Next question from Sarah Wexler. Go ahead. Hi, Dave. Um, so it's another game with uh, 14 pitchers on the roster. Is that just kind of a matter of having so many games in a row without a day off? And how long do you anticipate having that many pitchers on the active roster? Yeah, um, I, I would say um, it is odd. Um, I think that where we're at, just the coverage potential uh, makes sense. And the versatility piece that we do have on the bench. Um, it's going to be short lived and, and uh, we'll get back to normal. But I think right now that's where we're at. And are there any concerns about uh, working with a short bench? No, no. I, I think that we, we do a good job of maneuvering. And again, having versatile players that can kind of move around the diamond is, is makes my job a little bit easier. Thanks, Dave. You got it. Next question is from Mike DiGiovanna. Go ahead. Dave, we've talked a lot about Max getting pitched around. Is, it, is this one of those situations where you miss Cody's presence as much as his actual bat? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we're not one to uh, make excuses, but you, you, you're missing a, a, an MVP. So um, certainly other guys are getting opportunities. But as an opponent, when you're facing the Dodgers, you know, to not let Max beat you and to not have an MVP behind you, it certainly changes the dynamic. But credit to Max that he's taking the, taking the walks when they're given to him. And is the bullpen, are the bullpen guys you used last night, uh, you know, Blake and, and Victor, are they available tonight or is there anyone you want to shy away from? Yeah, I, I think they're available. Um, certainly if, you know, we go back to Alexander, Victor, or Blake, it might be a two-day down thing. So, uh, there's always a cost, but I think that's your question. They're all available. Thanks. Yep. Next question is from Bill Plunkett. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, Dave, during the uh, offensive lull, you've resisted uh, any temptation to kind of shake up the lineup. How much thought have you put into that? And is, is that a, a philosophical thing uh, not to do that? Um, it's not a philosophical thing. Um, I, I think that in years past, I think I have shown the, the uh, willingness to uh, move players around. I've been also kind of been victim of I do it too much. So um, I think right now, I think getting guys individually going, I, I don't think it's a lineup construction thing. I think it's an individual guys are going through the individual kind of struggles. Um, I do see it turning. The lineup for me, construction-wise, um, makes sense. It looks right. Um, and now it's just, you know, I want these guys to feel confident and just go out there and, you know, take good at bats, and I think the production will be there. And is there an individual benefit, though, sometimes from moving a guy to a different spot? Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, I think that, you know, if you look at outside of uh, the one, two, three, uh, we have done that. Um, so I don't think uh, there's a, there's not a thought of moving Mookie out of the one. Um, there's not a thought of moving Justin out of the three, who's been our most consistent performer. And, um, you know, he's in a little bit of a lull right now, but Corey is doing just fine. 
with an 800 OPS. So um, four, five, six, seven, I think all those other six spots, Bill, I think we have kind of changed it up. Thanks, Dave. Yep. We got time for one more. Go ahead, Eric. Dave, just wanted to double check. Uh, Chris Taylor is, is just a day off for him. Just a day off, um, seven in a row. Um, I think it's easy for a manager to want to run him out there every single day, but I think it's best for him to kind of get a day uh, be ready late if we need them and uh, to finish, uh, you know, the four games of this road trip out um, playing. Yeah, until we get to uh, the off day. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Thanks guys.